at GoFundMe.com. Search a painful exit. We've got more right now here on our big program. Yes, yes indeed. It is the world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio broadcast. We are live coast to coast, bowling a boat on the old iHeartRadio. Also 50 plus AM FM stations across the country and around the world. Making things happen over there with our good friends. And uh, all of our friends, all of our friends are coming by to say hello to us. So, we are going to be talking to Alan K. Patch here in just a few moments. AKPatchAuthor.com. Mr. Allen, Patch Allen, as my, um, as my, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't truly know what it is, but I think we've got our good friends going to be setting up here for akpatchauthor.com here in just a few seconds. Conflict in life, conflict in story, and of course, Alan K. Patch joins us today, akpatchauthor.com, and uh, we deal with conflict and make decisions on a daily basis. Screenwriters, authors, they uh, portray conflict in the stories to shed light on the struggles people encounter, and today our good friend, good close personal longtime friend, Mr. Alan, Mr. Alan K. Patch, the author, the legendary author, is here today to talk about the movie Jaws. And his new acclaimed paranormal thriller, The Catacombs Curse, which is a finalist in the Best Book Awards for 2020. That is awesome, Alan. How are you? All right. Great, Jiggy. So Always happy to be with you. Tell me about this uh, Best Book Awards thing. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, I never entered a uh, author's competition before. And uh, this time I decided to, to enter this uh, contest and... So yeah, I became a finalist in the cross genre category because my new book is a paranormal thriller. So it isn't really, uh, you know, just a, it's not really a paranormal story, story essentially, yeah. or a thriller, but it's combined together. And so, yeah, I was very, very, very pleased to uh, be uh, given that award, so, or at least that consideration. So yeah, it's That's... a good event. That is tremendous. That is tremendous. You should be very proud of yourself, my friend. So um, why does conflict drive a story, Alan? It seems that any anything you can think of, whether it's soap operas, whether it's movies, TV shows, conflict drives a story, my man. <laughs> well, it does. I mean, you know, and, and writers have, you know, this, there's a saying, you know, no, no conflict, no story. But in a novel, you know, we kind of demonstrate the personality of the character, the personality of the characters through these conflicts. So, you know, that conflict can be within ourselves, with others, um, with nature, or situations that we never expected to be in. So this makes for very dramatic scenes in movies, TVs, and books. You know, so when you watch these movies and TV shows, or you read a book, you know, look for how the writer is setting up the opposing forces. So you know, the antagonists or the protagonists or the heroes and the villains. Look how they set them up and set them up against each other. And uh, that always helps up. Uh, it helps you to see where they're going. We have got a tremendous guest with us today. Of course, our good friend Alan K. Patch is with us, akpatchauthor.com. You can get more information at akpatchauthor.com and pick up the books and uh, just tremendous, tremendous things going on over there so talking about story and talking about conflict and driving all this how did you do this with your latest book well in the catacombs curse the first thing an author does is you have to figure out what your character's greatest dreams are and what their worst fears are so then you place the characters in scenes where their dreams are withheld and their worst fears are realized and you kind of see this very often and it's really powerful. So let's take the movie Jaws. Okay. okay. Go back. Yes. Most, let's most start with that. have seen that movie. You know, the characters have to face the risk of a boat at sea, uh, the threat of this enormous predator, this giant, uh, you know, shark uh, that shows no mercy and they have to deal with their own fears. So the character of Quince, who's, you know, the old sea captain, who is a Navy veteran, um, he was on the Indianapolis, USS Indianapolis, that was sunk um, in the latter part of World War II. 
and uh, the ship was in secret delivering the atomic bomb from the island of Tinian. Um, they, they had just delivered it to the island of Tinian. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I was on this island with the Marines in 1984. So really 40 years That's awesome. later after the invasion uh, of Tinian. Uh, and we were there to gather up all the unexploded ordnance that was still there from World War II. And uh, it's also an island that they do live fire on. But I went to go see uh, the site where they put the bomb together, which is still on that island. There's a little bigger memorial there now than there was in, in the time that I was there in 84. But anyway, back to the story. Quince is a veteran of the USS Indianapolis, and the ship was sunk. Uh, a lot of the men were killed, but a lot of them went into the sea and were attacked by sharks. And and uh, it was a secret um, mission, so they didn't find out about it. Maybe didn't find out about it until days later. But a lot of guys died in the water um, due to the sharks and exposure. Uh, but anyway, he remembers that, and he has a latent fear from that. So the great author, uh, eventually, I believe his name was, you know, he when eventually they go to kill this shark off of Martha's Vineyard. You know, he he um, goes after that shark with sort of like this derangement at a point where the ship's broken. You know, he has to he says, forget it. You know, we're not going back in. I'm going after this shark. And we kind of <laughs> know what happens at the end of the story to Quince. So, you know, uh, so here's the thing. You know, the, the story is it's not only a battle against the elements and the shark. It's also you know, the struggle against ourselves or in the case of Quince against himself and his obsession with getting the shark. We have got a uh, tremendous guest with us today. Of course, our good friend Alan K. Patch joins us here in our broadcast. He joins us live to discuss this uh, incredible, incredible uh, book. We're, we're also talking about a, a cool little topic today, and that's conflict and how this you know, it drives stories and, and, and makes things happen. So getting back to your book, The Catacombs Curse, what happens to some of the characters in this book? Well, you know, I've set up different layers of conflict. Uh, the first one is that uh, two of the characters, uh, Giselle and Ag Alexandre, they're from 1815 and uh, they live in Paris. And they've been hired by a British bank to get news of the Battle of Waterloo as quickly as possible over to London. Um, but, you know, they're French, but now they're working for the British, kind of sets up a little bit of a bit of treason there in a way. Um, but they want this news quickly. And uh, but there's also a competing bank that wants it as well. And this puts the characters in great peril. And uh, it's bad for them. It sets up a disastrous course. And at some point, their bones are stacked in the famous Paris catacombs, uh, which I've talked about on previous shows. But uh, it's a place that you can visit today. There's, you know, millions of sets of bones down there when the graveyards were emptied in Paris in the late 1700s. And so you can go down there and visit. And so it became a good place uh, as a setting for this novel. So that's the first conflict. The second conflict is that is that this is really a paranormal thriller story and it's about a tourist who was possessed by one of these spirits from 1815. This spirit has no intention of giving the body back that it's taken. And so part of the story is this, is this uh, you know, effort by the character to get his body back. And so it's just kind of an interesting way to set up this, this conflict between the characters from different times um, and they're out, they're out of uh, their element, you know. A uh, character from 1815 is all of a sudden thrust into the modern world and has to deal with it. Uh, so it's, it's kind of fun to, to arrange all these plots, Jimmy, and, and come up with twists and turns. We have got Alan K. Patch with us today. He joins us live here on our big program, Coast to Coast, Border to Border on iHeartRadio. Also, amfm247.com. Tune in, iTunes, and of course, uh, you can find us each and every week on amfm247.com. So, Alan, um, where do we get your books? Where, where do we get involved with what you're doing? How, how do we get all this going, my friend? Well, you know, I get four books out now, Jiggy, and you can go to Amazon, and uh, the first trilogy is there, the Apollo series, which is a time travel adventure series about the past, present, and future. And uh, this new one, Catacombs Curse, is also on Amazon, and you just go to Amazon, type in the Catacombs Curse, and it'll come up, and there's a print and an ebook version. 
and you know, just it, it's it's great as an author. Uh, my goal is to entertain my readers, you know, and to take them on a journey to times and places or things that they never have thought of or never been to. And uh, that's that's where what writers uh, get a lot of uh, joy from is uh, creating these stories and bringing bringing readers along with it. So go to Amazon, you can get the Catacombs Curse there. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. I definitely am looking forward to chatting with you next week. Thanks for always bringing us a uh, incredible topic and putting a lot of thought and effort into what you do, my friend, because uh, it shows. And congratulations on that uh, on that honor with, with with the book awards. Hopefully, that goes well for you, my friend. Yes, thanks so much, Jiggy. Talk to you then. I appreciate it. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you, Patch. There he goes, Alan K. Patch. AKPatchAuthor.com. You can.